Welcome, welcome family. Welcome to Hope Chapel Pro West Freedom Point. We are so happy and excited for all those who are tuned in here and afar. I know there's so much going on right now with COVID-19 and also with Hurricane Douglas turning up on um, island chains, but nevertheless, let's remind ourselves and remind all the storms how big our God is. Even in our own personal storms, understanding and knowing that our God is always in control no matter what we go through in life. And so I just wanted to encourage each and every one of you out there that we are standing in prayers with you, Father, and, and, and against all that's going on right now, knowing that our Father is for us and is with us through it all. My, my verse of the day is Isaiah 40, 29. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Family, let's pray. Father, we just come to you humbly. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for this opportunity, Father, that we can come together as one, as a family, Father, to acknowledge you, to, to hear your word. And so we pray, Father God, that you bless our pastor, our senior pastor, Father God. Bless him in such boldness, Father God, as he delivers your mail, your word, that your word enriches our heart, Father, our ears, that we'll take it and apply it in our lives to honor you, to glorify your kingdom in Jesus' name. And so, Father, I also pray, Father God, for such a time as this, that you would bless those who are weak, that you give them power through all this to understand that they are not alone, that you are right there with us and, and, and for us, that we are not going through this alone. I pray your blessings over your people in mighty ways, Father, to continue to stand strong, to be an encourager, to help to love one another, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you'll bless, that your will be done in our lives here on earth that is in heaven. Let your will be done, Father, in the name of Jesus. Protect people out there. Protect your people. Heal those who may be sick, Father, in the name of Jesus, such as time as this. I pray your blessings over the first responders, Father, that you bless them even no the more, Father God. Bless them even no the more in the name of Jesus. Protect them even no the more in the name of Jesus for the government, Father God, for the leaders, that decisions that are made is with you in the center of it all, Father, in the name of Jesus. Bless, bless the service today, Father God. Bless every ministry, all the leaders, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you right now for what you're doing, knowing that we do not have to worry, do not have to be afraid, for anything because you are right there with us and we thank you for that we thank you for your comfort we thank you for providing us continuously we thank you for your unconditional love through your son jesus christ thank you lord jesus thank you and so father we surrender it all to you and we give you all the praise we give you all the honor we give you all the glory all is yours and we pray this in your son's mighty name jesus christ amen let's join our uh, worship team Hello, Hello everybody. Family. Good morning, family. Um, thank you, Pastor Sam, for that encouraging word and getting us kicked off in prayer. Um, we just want to encourage you guys to get into the spirit this morning, to stand up, sing, dance, and praise with us um, because we're going to eliminate all of the distractions from the hurricane today and we're going to praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
never ends out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. Never ends out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up. Never runs out on me. Worship team, awesome, awesome song. Welcome all of you to Hope Chapel Pro S and our online service. We are excited to have all of you here today. You know, there's a lot going on in the world and we know it, we know it. But as Pastor Sam said, our God is in control. And as the worship team just said, his love will never fail. It will never run from us. And so let's all take joy in that as we go for today's service. And we worship him and praise him as the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. Now, as we are going through this service we know god's love never fails but we also know and so we should be resting in comfort in that but we know we're human and we know we need people we need to reach out to people and we want to encourage folks that we here at hope chapel pro s are here for you so there's many different ways to contact us i want to encourage you folks to reach out if you're in need of anything go ahead and reach out to us you need someone to talk to reach out to us you need some kind of help moving things around reach out to us our contact information is there whether it be through our website, whether it be through texting, email, whatever the case may be, we'll be providing that for you folks to go ahead and reach out. So check out the chat or check out whatever it is that we have inside there. You can find our information. You know, we'll take a little moment now here to give all of us an opportunity to go ahead and worship and praise the Lord in another way. We did it through song. We did it through prayer. We also have an opportunity to go ahead and worship the Lord through our finances, through our offerings. And so we'll kind of take a moment here to just think through all the different blessings that God has given us in, in our lives. You know, it may not always feel like it, but if we really think down, really think in our heart, God is there. God provides for all of us. And so another way that we can go ahead and worship him is to go ahead and give our offering. So I'll give you a moment here to search your heart, what it is that we would present back to God as a thank you to all that he has done for us. And let me lead us in prayer. Dear Father God, Lord, Thank you. Thank you for undying love, Lord. Thank you for blessing us with everything that we have. We, uh, Lord, we offer this, whatever that we can, to you, Lord, as a sign of our, our, our gratefulness and our, our thankfulness, Lord, for all that you do for us. We ask that you please bless this offering that we present to you. 
We ask that you use it to further your kingdom here on earth, Lord. Allow it to strengthen your church body here and to grow your church body here, Lord, so that we can spread your word. We can shine your light. We can turn more people towards you, Lord, as you would want it, Lord. So thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity to gather here together with this, your church body, Lord, to worship you and to praise you, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, Lord. Amen. Now I'll turn it over to Pastor James, and he will continue with our service. Pastor James. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. Thank you, uh, Pastor Mark C., uh, Pastor Sam, and our worship team. Can we give the Lord a hand of praise for our worship team this morning? Man, so awesome. Just, just amazing. Now, listen, I, I know I told you last week, I said, hey, you know, all of our leaders, we're going to be standing up. We're going to be engaged. And, and you're like, okay, PJ, you're sitting down again. Well, going through some logistical challenges. But you know what? Let me tell you what remains constant. Let me tell you who stays faithful to his word. That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If he says he's going to do it, he will do it. That lets you know you can't worship me and you can't trust, you know, a lot of the things that man says, but we can always trust God. How about giving the Lord a hand of praise this morning? Man, so good. So good. I kind of like what the worship team was doing. He says, your love never fails. It never gives up never, you know, runs out on me. And, and I'm just so thankful for that. I even like the little reggae that was going on. So I, hopefully you were kind of moving around and flowing with it. I know my daughter, because was out there talking about, hey, hey. No, it, it's just good. It's just good to worship God in spirit and in truth. So we want you to, even if you're in your living room, if you're in your kitchen, there was somebody this morning cooking bacon and eggs, and we were like, hey, we want to go to your house and eat. We're not going to call her name, Sherry, but praise the Lord. The whole point of the matter is we can worship God and the beauty of holiness in our very spaces. So if you're in your bed laying down, if you're sitting on the edge of your seat in your living room, hey, if you're in your study, there are some people in their cars right now, wherever you find yourself this morning, consider this afternoon or tonight, whenever you're watching this, please understand God is still in control. He is still working things out and he is worthy to be praised. Can somebody type that in the chat? God is worthy to be praised. I know my uncle Felix from Chicago is out there watching. Uncle, God is still worthy to be praised. Come on, put it in the chat. Man, God is so good. So listen, this morning, uh, uh, many of you know uh, this afternoon, tonight, that Hawaii is in the midst of... Uh, I guess Douglas, that's a hurricane, and, and it's uh, kind of heavy for us. And so we ask for your prayers. We know that God is, is going to be faithful. Uh, he's always faithful to his children. And uh, just keep us in your prayers as we keep you in your prayers. Of course, we know this season is very volatile. There's so many things that are going on, so many things that are happening. But our anchor, listen, our, our security our certainty is found in Jesus Christ the Lord. He never changes. Can we say amen to that? Amen. I guess y'all can tell I'm a little bit excited. I want to get into the word of God this morning. I believe that we have a word this afternoon. I know we've got a word for God tonight, whatever your time zone is. And so I just want to jump right, right into it if we can. So let me share my screen and we will jump right into it in Jesus' name. Well, everybody knows that we made it halfway through uh, this season, and, and now we're still going. We're still moving forward. And so last week, we, we were wanting to do a declaration. We did it a few weeks ago, and I want to kind of do it again this morning because I want us to know wherever we are, whatever that time zone is, that God is with us, and we are his children. So, so, so I want to give you John 16, 33. He says this to the disciples. He says, I've told you these things so that you will have peace in me. Are you listening to me tonight? Are you listening to me this afternoon? He says, I want you to have peace, but your peace should be in me. He says, in this world, you will have tribulations. You will have trials. 
You will have circumstances. You will have calamity. But take courage. Take heart. Be cheerful. Why? Why do we need to be cheerful in the midst of uncertainty, calamity, turmoil, you know, setbacks? Why should we take courage? Well, he gives us the answer. He says, I have defeated the world. I have the utmost victory. I have conquered it. I have overcome everything that this world could bring. Remember, we said he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and he is the ending. And so with that, I want to jump right into the declaration. Y'all ready? I want y'all to do it with me. Are y'all ready? Okay, I, I don't see anybody moving. Somebody's drinking coffee right now. Go on, put your coffee down and get with me. Y'all ready? Ready, repeat this with me. Because my faith in Jesus, yes, because my faith in Jesus, number one, I am what? A child of God. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. Number two, I am an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. These things are not overcoming me. They're not taking over me, but I'm using these things as stepping stones into the very thing that God is calling into my life. Number three, I am victorious. I'm not defeated. Come on, I'm not defeated, but I am victorious because of my faith in Jesus Christ. And number four, I am more than a conqueror. I'm a mighty warrior through God in Christ Jesus. What am I saying? I am saying that if my faith is grounded in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who has been victorious over all of the things of this world, we are victorious as well. Can we say amen? Woo, that's so good. And so with that said, I want to kind of share with you our heart today. We're praying for you. Are you, are you listening to me? We are praying for you. Yes, you. Yes, you. We're praying for you. And, and if you could, put it in the chat. Those of you who want to stay engaged this morning, put it in the chat. We got you covered. Come on, PJ, we got you covered. Pastor Sam, Pastor Jody, we got you covered. Come on, Uncle Felix, we got, we got you covered. Kashavia, Taniko, we got you covered. And we got you covered. There's so many. My sister-in-law, we got you covered. Because that's what God has called us to do. We've got you covered in prayer. Prayer is so important for the body of believers. And sometimes I believe that we forget that. So let me put some reminders out there so that you can remember. Number one, prayer is an absolute privilege for the child of God. Can we say amen? It's an absolute privilege. Auntie Aaron, I see you in the chat. Yeah, it's an absolute privilege privilege we found in Hebrews chapter 4. It, it talks about Jesus Christ being our great high priest and how he took on the sins of the world. He took them to the cross. Then he bowed his head and he died. And the Bible says that when he gave up his life, come on, going through the tabernacle into the most holies and then the holies of holies, there was a veil separating man from God. But the Bible says that when Christ gave up his life, Y'all listening to me? The veil was torn from top to bottom, which now gives us direct access to God the Father. You don't need PJ. You don't need another man. You don't need another woman to go to God on your behalf. The veil is torn. We can go to him boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. It's a privilege for the child of God. Number two, Prayer is absolutely powerful. Can y'all repeat that with me? Just say it out loud. Prayer is powerful. Come on, I mean, say it like you mean it. Prayer is powerful. Yeah, it is absolutely powerful. Well, how, how is it powerful? It's powerful because of our, our faith is in the right place. Come on, it, it is in the first chair. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, and I'm, I'm putting my focus on him because he is in all powerful God. And so that's where it is. And James says this, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Somebody says, well, we're not righteous, PJ. We are made righteous. We are positionally righteous because of the finished work of Christ. Yes, prayer is powerful. Not only is it powerful, but it produces results. Are y'all listening to me? 
prayer produces results. What am I saying here? When we pray, come on, come on. This, this is fundamental to a whole chapel, Pearl West. When we pray, put it in the chat. Come on, finish it up. When we pray, come on, somebody. When we pray, God moves. Why? Because we're not praying based upon, you know, things of the world, but we're praying to the one who holds the key, come on, to heaven and earth in his hand. And when we pray to him, it yields results. The Bible talks about Elisha, that Elisha prayed to God to stay the rain. And guess what? It didn't rain on the earth for three and a half years. And then the Bible says he prayed again. And when he prayed again, come on, an abundance of rain began to fall upon the earth. I'm here to tell you right now, if you want to see the power of God, if you want to see the results of God, if you want to see God change things in your life, in your marriage, in your finances, in your vocation. Listen, if you want to see God change things in your relationship, in your attitude, in your disposition, all we have to do is pray. Pray to the one who produces results, results beyond my natural abilities. Can somebody say amen? Somebody put it in the chat. Prayer produces what? Results. Prayer produces results. And then here's a new one that I want to add to it this morning as I dial in to the message. Hey, this was all an introduction. So, so let me, let me kind of, kind of land this plane. Somebody said, land the plane, PJ. All right. I'll land the plane. Here's the fourth one. Prayer builds intimacy with God. Prayer allows us to cultivate our relationship with him. Prayer allows us to kind of talk to him just as we are and allow him to share with us what he wants to share with us. Prayer builds intimacy with God. And the scripture that I, I've chosen for this morning as the Lord laid it upon my heart was John 16, 33. This is Jesus talking to the disciples at the culmination of many teachings that were going on. And the disciple says, Jesus, we finally get it. We finally understand what you've been telling us all along. Jesus says, so you finally get it. I am so glad. Then he says these words, look, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. Come on. And he's talking to all of us right here. He says, and if anyone hears me calling and opens the door. Are y'all listening? And opens the door. I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. What is he saying? He's saying, listen, I am doing this. I am doing these things. I am knocking at your door, at the door of your heart. I am knocking where no one else knows that I'm knocking but you. And he says, if you let me in and we're able to fellowship together, listen, we will be better will be better. We'll come to know him more. And our lives will be transformed because of what? The relationship. And so through prayer, we're able to build the relationship. I'll say it again. Through prayer, we build the relationship. Through prayer, we build intimacy with God and God alone. And so the disciples, they asked Jesus, okay, Lord, you've been teaching us so many things. You've been sharing so much, Lord. Lord, I, I want you to share one more thing with us. And so Jesus says, what is that? And they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. And that particular passage is found in, in Luke chapter 11. But I believe the, the full frame or the attitude, if you will, or the motivation behind uh, us praying and, and what Jesus wanted the disciples to capture. What Jesus wants us to understand by prayer is found in Matthew 6, chapter 5 through 13. We want to talk about what is God saying about us praying and how we should pray. Let us go to the word of God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6 says this, and this is Jesus's response. Remember, the disciples says, teach us how to pray. And I don't know if they were saying, teach us how to pray because we want to do miracles like you do. Uh, we, we want you to teach us how to pray because, because you know, the, the miraculous signs. Listen, you, you fed two fishes. I mean, you fed a multitude with two fishes, five barley loaves. You took seven loaves and 
few fish and you, and you fed 4,000, you calmed the winds and the seas. I, I don't know if that was their motivation, but the bottom line was they were earnest in asking, teach us how to pray. And he says these words, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. All right, and, and before I go into this message, I'm not picking on anybody right now. I'm just giving the word of God, right? So if you're offended, you're offended in God's word. All right, so keep going. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the streets or in the synagogues where everyone can see them. And, and I, I believe that we know people like that. I mean, they just love to pray. They love to be front stage. Father God, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord. Lord, you just delivered Nemo. You found him, Lord. You took Gilligan off the island, Jesus. You know, those kind of prayers. No, the Lord is saying that. Listen, don't pray like that. Don't, don't pray like that. He says, I tell you the truth. When you pray in this manner, you already have your reward. Somebody say amen. I believe we've all heard it. We've all heard it. The grandiose prayers. God, you know, you created the universe and you, you, you separated the seas from, by the firmament of your power and your excellent greatness. And, and if that's truly their personality, then I understand that. But more times than not, people are praying these, these mighty prayers. And you know what happens a lot of times? People get intimidated. They go, I, I can't pray like that. You, you, you know, I, I don't want to go to God because I, I don't use those same words that they use. And I, I just really don't know how to, how to pray in this manner. Well, guess what? Jesus is saying, don't pray like that. Don't you pray like this. Guess what he says, though? He says, but when you pray, come on, when you decide to really have commune with God, he says, when you pray, go away, come on, by yourself. Come on, not, not, not with a whole bunch of folks around. You don't need an audience, right? You don't need four or five people. You don't need 50 people. You don't need 100 folks on Facebook or 2,000 people on Facebook. No, when you go to me, this is what God is saying. He's saying, go by yourself. Shut the door behind you, right? That means you don't need to tell anybody, well, I'm getting ready to go pray. I'm getting ready to go talk to God about it. No, no, no. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. I say this often and I, I feel it important for me to share it again, that, that, that my relationship with Jesus Christ was not founded upon the fact that I am a pastor or I'm a minister of the gospel, that I'm an evangelist. No, my relationship is clearly founded upon and predicated upon my relationship with him. He and I alone talking to him, not talking to him based upon my title, not talking to him based upon my money, not talking to him based upon, you know, the, the, the knowledge that I have in scripture, but I'm talking to him just as Thomas. I'm just being real before you. God, I'm worried. I'm, I'm sad. I'm impatient. Lord, I messed it up again. Father, I really want to do your will. Help me. Show me how to do. This is what God is, is saying. This is what Jesus was saying to the disciples. This is what the Lord is saying to us today. Listen, shut the door. Come on. Get there by yourself. Cocoon in with God and talk to him. Have a conversation with the Lord. Have a normal conversation with the, I love it, Lord. And somebody put that in the chat. Have a normal conversation with the Lord. This is not theatrics. You're not on a theater. Listen, you're not in the movies. You, you, you're not, you know, uh, vying for a position here, right? All you're doing is building that relationship. And he says this, then your father who sees everything in secret, right, will reward you. That's what we're looking for, right? We're not looking for the reward, but we're looking for the relationship. Goes on and says this, when you pray, don't babble on and on. Come on, don't babble on and on like the Gentiles or the pagans, you know, or like everybody else does. Are y'all listening? Don't babble on and on. They think their prayers are answered, why? By repeating the same old words, over and over and over again. You know, a, a few days ago, I'll just put it that way, a few days ago, and, and it's happened many times where you, you're, you're listening to a prayer and the prayer starts and, and it's going good and, and you know, connecting with God. 
and then they start the prayer all over again with the same things and they go on and on and on. And that's where I got that line about land the plane already. La land the plane already. You said that already. We trust in God. Just say amen and get it over with. But I believe God is saying something here. He, he's saying something for us to really understand. Well, what is it, PJ? What does he want us to understand? We don't have to put on any airs, right? We don't have to say things over and over. Just get it out there from your heart. Share with him your heart. Share with him what your concerns are. Share with him your dreams. Share with him your desires. Share with him your needs. Just talk to God and allow God to talk to you. Listen, it's, it's beautiful how God is laying this out. And then he goes on and says this. He says, don't be like them. Why? And here it is. Here is the freedom in talking to God just like you are. He says, listen, your heavenly father knows exactly what you need before you even ask him. Man, that's just beautiful. Well, well, well PJ, I don't, I don't have to, you know, go into three-level detail of my life. You can if you want to, but you really don't. Why? Because God knows exactly what you need. That's the type of God that we serve. I want you to really get this. God is the type of God who knows exactly what we need. What am I saying here? Sometimes we pray and we, we think we're asking God for something that we need. And God says, you really don't need that. What you need is this. You don't need what you're saying, but I know exactly what you need. And I'm going to give you that. Just ensure that when you come to me, you come to me for the relationship's sake. You come to me to, to, to carry your burdens and, and lay them at my feet. Feet. You, you, you come here to get insight and understanding. You come to take your sorrows and trade them in for joy, turmoil for peace, sadness for happiness. I'm telling you, this is what God wants for his children. He knows exactly what we need. We talked about this last week. Be certain the Lord knows what you need. So somebody needs that reminder. Just put it in the chat. The Lord knows what you need. And I'm not going to call the roll this morning, but I'm talking to you. Yes, you, you, yes, you. God knows. He knows what you need. Can we say amen? Goes on and he says this. Now listen, I've laid it out for you, disciples. I've laid it out for you, children of God, even for us today. I've laid it out for you. You, you don't need to be a public spectacle. You don't need to do that. And you don't need to go on and on and on and on, vain repetitions. But all I need you to do is shut the door behind you, get cocooned, and lock in on me, and just talk to me just as you are, because I know what you need. And then he lays it out. Some, some scholars would say that, that verse 9 through 13 is the Lord's prayer or the model prayer and, and all I want to share with you is this, and I'm not disputing what they're saying, but I want to put it into context to give you a framework that after we get on, get after we get off of this call uh, this evening, tonight, you'll be able to kind of look at it and go, ah, this is what God was saying. And this is what Jesus was saying to the disciples. This is what he's saying to us. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to calm down. I'm going to go into a teaching mode where he says, listen, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. First and foremost, Jesus is saying, we need, when we go to God, we need to go to him as our Father. Come on, not as our earthly Father, but as our heavenly Father. And that he is a holy God. And, and, and so some things that, that really kind of rub PJ a little bit is when we, we go to God as if he's Santa Claus. You know, and, and, and we put down our list of things that we want and our desires and, and our dreams, and, and we go to him from that place. Or we go to God, and I've been hearing it here of late uh, uh, that, you know, it's just like God being a genie in the bottle. If you just rub him just right, you say just the right words. If you do it just right, come on, Minister Cleo, if you do it just right, he'll give us what we need. No, that is not 
That is not how we approach God. We approach God the Father, come on, as a holy God. What does that mean? That means we can't go to him any kind of way. Come on, we cannot try to manipulate God into doing the things that we want him to do. Come on, we can't go to God lying, talking, and making up excuses why we are the way that we are. But we have to go to him as our heavenly father who knows all, who sees all, who is all powerful, who is ever present, meeting our needs, our desires, and our wants. But we have to come to him from a place of being real. So if I had you to type anything in the chat, when we go before God, we got to be real. Put that in the chat. You just got to be real. You got to be real before you. You have to be transparent. You know why? Because he already knows. He already knows my issues. He already knows my hangup. So I, don't, I can't go to God saying, well, God, you know, I'm, I'm just struggling. I'm trying, Lord. You know, but God, I've been doing some good on this side. And Lord, you, you understand my heart. And, and, and I'm saying all of this because I want God to, 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 to kind of pat me on my back. And then I'll say, it's okay, son. You got to pass. No, we have to go to God as a holy God. He says, may your kingdom come soon and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, I know this one got me. This passage got me right here because it's clear what Jesus was saying to the disciples and what he's saying to us. He's saying, listen, our motivation when we go to God is for God's will to be first for God's kingdom to be manifested on the earth in my life, not soon, but right now. I'm coming to God because I want whatever he is doing in heaven to be done in my life when? Right now. I am sick of being frustrated, tired, angry, scared, and God, I know there's no anger, there's no fear. Come on, there is no angst going on in heaven, so I'm coming to you, and I'm asking you that the peace, the love, the joy, the happiness to be manifested down here on earth in my life, in my marriage, in my finances, in my emotions, in my relationships. Come on, right now, in Jesus' name. Can we say amen? Listen, Jesus made it clear if you want things to change into your life, you've got to ask God to bring heaven down here on earth. And never mind what I want, God, but I want your will to be done. Come on, come on, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, Holy Spirit. Speak to us today. Speak to us today. God, I, I, I just want you to fire my boss. I want you to get rid of him. Lord, I want you to change my wife. You know, God, my children, they don't act right. They don't talk right. They're always begging for money, but they never want to help. God is saying, no, 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 no. I'm doing something with your kids, your boss, your wife, your living conditions this season. Just pray. Ha, that my kingdom would be manifested in the midst of your situation. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord a hand of prayer. That's what God, that's what he's asking us to do. Bring it, Lord. Bring it to earth as it's already being done in heaven. My, 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 that's so good, so good. Then he says this. He says, you ought to pray for the necessities of life. You, you ought to, he already knows. But, but you need to understand your necessities of life. And it helps us to frame who provides the necessities of life. He says, give us today the food that we need. Hallelujah. Give us today the things that you know that we need. Come on, give us today, Lord. I'm not thinking about tomorrow, but, but for today, you know exactly what I need. And, and, and my frame of reference is knowing that nobody can give me what I need but you, God. Not my money. Come on, not my education, not my title, not my family, not my cousin, them, not my children. Come on. Only you, God, can provide what I need. I want you to get it this morning. Jesus was saying, Listen, ask me what you need, but understand why you're asking, because I am your God, and I will provide what? Everything 
that you need. Come on, give the Lord a hand of prayer. That's so good. So good. So good. Then he says this. Well, don't hang up. Stay on Facebook. Come on. Stay, stay on Zoom. Stay on the chat. Because this one here, it trips us all up. He says, and, and when you pray, go ahead and ask the Father to forgive you for all the wrongs that you have done. Go ahead. Don't, don't go to him acting like you, you so holy. Come on, that you got it all together, that you haven't done anything wrong, you haven't said anything wrong, you haven't thought anything wrong. No, go to him clean and say, Lord, forgive me for the sins that I've committed today. Last week, uh, the, the sins that I may commit after I finish this prayer, right? Uh, you know, forgive me for how I respond on, on H1. Uh, just forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. And then you ready? Because here's the other part of that. As we have not, as we are forgiving, it says, as we have what? Forgiven. As we have in like manner that we have what? forgiven in the same way. Come on, parallel your forgiveness of my sins with the way I have, come on somebody, where the preacher's at, as I have forgiven those who have wronged me. Well, there you have it. There you have it. And therein lies the rub. And so even in, in, in teaching about prayer, Jesus drops in and talks about forgiveness and how important it is. The Bible talks about us, you know, before you give your sacrifice and you lay it on the altar, and, and if you think as you land it on the altar that, that you have an alt, a disagreement, there is a wedge between you and your brother, you are to do what? Leave it, go get it right with your brother, your sister, and then come back. Come on, somebody. There's a principle here. It's a principle here principle here. So, so he says it, forgive us of our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And then he says these words, and lead us not into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. And I know a lot of times we recite this, and I don't even know if we really, well, I'm not going to put it on y'all, say on me. A lot of times I don't even, I haven't even taken the time to really you know, understand what Jesus was saying, even in this aspect. And lead us not into temptation. Well, wait a minute. I can see Pastor Mark uh, Obataki out there saying, yeah, teach it, PJ. Well, preacher, just hold your hat because we're going to lay it down. Lead us not into temptation. Well, first of all, God does not tempt us. I'm going to say it again. God does not tempt us. God is a holy God. And God will not lead us into an area to tempt us for us to stumble or to fall or to, to roll over into a ditch. Come on, like a booby trap, right? And we're, uh, you know, in a hole trying to crawl our way out. No, no, no. What is this passage really saying here? God, I trust you and I'm giving you permission to lead me away from the temptation. I know temptation will come. I know that the enemy is out there to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Father, you know those things that quickly trip me up. And so I'm asking you, Lord God, because you know what's going to happen from the time that I roll out of the bed until I get back into the bed in the evening. In the midst of all of this, lead me in a clean path. Come on, lead me through the way that you want me to go. Shine the light in my path that I'll know which way that I need to go. That, that's what that scripture is talking about. Listen, there's, there's a scripture in, I think it's in 2 Corinthians, where, where it talks about 9 and 13, I believe that's where, where it is, where, where it talks about, hey, uh, there is no temptation that is, that is not common unto man, meaning that we've all been tempted. But God is faithful. Come on, somebody type it in the chat. With temptations, God is faithful. Come on, put it in the chat. Come on, we're preaching right now. God is what? Faithful. Come on, that with the temptation, come on, with the temptation, with that snare that comes your way, he will also make a way of escape that we will be able to bear it. That's the promise. 
So he doesn't lead us into temptation. He, he leads us away. But what we're saying is, God, help me. I need you to guide me. I need you to lead me. And, and if, and if I get caught in, into a space of temptation, you know, I love ice cream. And, and we was talking about eating ice cream. I got so excited. You know, Lady Judith would say, yeah, maybe we can get some ice cream. I said, yeah, let's get some ice cream, sister. Let's get some ice cream. And you know what she said? She said, no, we, we can't go, you know, we can't go eat ice cream, you know, for the next 10 days. We're trying to work on some things. And, and, and the sister don't even know that when I eat, when I go to Baskin Robbins, I get a vanilla shake. And that vanilla shake does something to my body. And that's all I'm going to say. And, and so the Lord, even in that, was leading me away from, from that. Do y'all get that? Lead me away from, from, from that temptation. Because that's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. And, and for the men that, that, that's a part of, part of a, a bold ministry, you know, I talk all the, all the time about, you already know Pastor Sam, we, we talk about karaoke. I was like, hey, as your pastor, I can't do karaoke because because karaoke brings out something that ain't godly. So, no, we ain't doing no karaoke. God mess my schedule up so that I can stay holy before you. But if I happen to fall into a karaoke situation, let my wife be right there to rescue me from the evil one. <laughs> Come on, y'all, get a lot of hands That's what God wants us to do. He, he's, he, we're, we're, we're putting it in his hands. We're putting our life. We're putting our daily activities. We're putting, come on, we're saying, Lord, we want you to go before us. Go before us, Lord, so that we don't, we don't fall into the snares of the enemy. But if we find ourselves in that situation, in that, that position, Father, we're praying that you will make a way of escape. That way of escape could be a phone call. It could be a text message. It could be a family member that shows up. You know, you're, you're about to go down that path and do something that, that you're not supposed to do. And then the, the horn is blowing and you look out and it's somebody that, that you're like, oh my God. I, and then you do a U-turn. You, you leave that area. You, you, you stop doing that. I, I just pray you understand what I'm saying. That's the power of God. And that's how we build intimacy with him. And then he... He closes it up this way, and, and, and some passages don't have this, but, but I love it. It's in, it's in the King James Version. When I grew up, I used to hear this all the time, that if you preach uh, anything, if you teach anything, if you read anything but the King James Version, come on, come on, Josh Cam, you'll die and go to hell. But I'm here to tell you today, man, it's in the King James Version, so, and I love it, and it's powerful, and it's a source of reminder. As we close up our prayer time, this is Jesus talking to the disciples. He says, for yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. And yours is the glory forever. Amen. What is this saying? That Lord, in the midst of it all, I will make sure that I don't take credit for anything that you're doing in my life. All the power, it's yours. God, so if I need it, I know you've got it. Yours is the power. Come on. And yours is the kingdom. What, what, what are we saying? God, you own it all. You are the sovereign. You're the sovereign Lord. You're the sovereign Lord. Everything bows at your feet. You're the creator of all, of all. And so, God, it's yours. It's your kingdom. It's your power. And then finally, it's your glory your glory, God. I give it all to you. And so that allows us not to give man the credit. Are y'all listening to me? It allows us not to give the legal system the, the credit, you know, the stimulus check. There's, there's people out there that's, that's, that's praising the stimulus check, right? Because because it's good right now, you know, uh, and, 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 I, and I don't have anything wrong with that other than the fact that we, we must give all glory and honor to the who? To the creator, to God, who set those things in motion for his children. And we are his children. 
you know, we, we want to thank God and always mess it up. The meteorologists, I think that's what you call them, right? We go, you know, they, they said the storm is going to pass us up. Man, that's just awesome. No, all the glory and the honor goes to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because God can, can put the, the, the storm on a one degree alter it, right? That will go all the way past us and not bring harm or calamity to us. We give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise because of what he's doing. Not the doctors, not the lawyers, not our friends, not the bankers, not the creditor. It all goes to God. And so this morning when I was meeting with our, with our leaders, I, I, I said, you know, I, I want to I wanna know. It was like a litmus test. You know, I just kind of want to know, are the, are the leaders praying? And yes, our leaders are praying, if you want to know. Yeah, they are praying. And I, and I said, has anybody prayed and asked God for something? Have you, prayed and, have you prayed and asked God for something, you know, in your life? And uh, he showed up and he answered this week or this morning. I just want to know. And there, there was maybe, maybe, maybe a two-second pause. And then uh, one, one of the ministers, and we'll, we'll call him one of our ministers. Uh, of course, he has a church home, but anybody that, that's with us uh, this evening, tonight, uh, you're, part of, you're part of Hope Chapel Pearl West Freedom Point. And so Minister Tony Warren, you know, uh, unmuted himself and said, yeah, yeah I, I got a testimony. I, I, I prayed and I talked to God. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to mess it up. But, but I believe that as you hear his testimony, he's going to talk about his personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and, and coming to the Lord just as himself and understanding that only God could bring about the change because God is the sovereign God and, 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 and he's all powerful and he's able to do what man and the doctors and others cannot do. So, so Minister Tony, I, I pray that you're on and, and, and I pray that you're unmuted and i just want to greet you and then you kind of share with the lord uh minister tony how you doing this morning i'm i am doing great my brother happy smiling enjoying the word bro really enjoying amen the word. amen i i am so thankful for that and thank you for for joining and, and being with us amen i joke a lot that you're part of our our church family and and then we're just glad about it but listen man as we are ministering this word and, and i believe that we should always have testimony on what god is doing in the lives of his people as it relates to praying and waiting on god can you kind of share with us your testimony and, and what god has has done for you in the past few days amen yes um it started thursday it started last thursday um, I was on my way to work. My wife was on her way to have a little doctor's checkup. And as I came back home on um, Thursday, I realized she wasn't home yet. So, I, you know, we always FaceTime each other because we always like to look at each other when we're talking because, you know, when you look at each other, your face tells the truth. So when I called, I said, what's up? And she said um, that she, they, they wanted to keep her overnight. And I said, for what? And they said they wanted to do more tests. So in other words, when that happened, I start praying. And I start calling other brothers and sisters in Christ to pray with me. And as the week, week, weekend came through, Friday, I woke up and I said, well, maybe she's going to be on her way home. And I called and she said, nope, they want to keep me another night. That hit home. And like you said, bruh, Prayer is powerful. Prayer produces results. And I will tell you, the Lord exactly knows what I need. So that Saturday night came. I've been all alone for the last two nights, wanting my wife to be home. And I can continue to pray. And um, one, another minister prayed with me last night, um, Minister Ellett from Roxboro, North Carolina. She prayed with me. And so as I was sitting in my, you know, brother, you asked me to pray. You asked me to pray for you. You asked me to pray during the day. And I said, bro, it ain't going to be no way possible because, you know, I have to go visit my wife tomorrow. But you know what? God knew. God knew before I knew. 
And it reminds me of that, that scripture from Jeremiah 33 and 3. It said, call to me and I will answer you and tell you great things, unsearchable things you do not know. And I didn't know. So, only, but God knows my heart. And as I was sitting here last night, about nine o'clock, it's dark. I said, well, let me call my wife because I'm getting ready to go to bed. And my God, I called her and I said, where are you? You ain't in the hospital, are you? She said, no, babe, I'm on my way home. And when she told me she was on her way home, I gave God the praise. And I just want to thank everyone that's out there that was praying for my situation that God bless in a healing, he is a healing God. And I just want to thank God. And with that, I would like to go ahead and pray, bro. I want you to continue to pray to my God because prayer changes things. And I would like to go ahead and start praying. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being the Father who give us the word, who give us the love, who give us the goodness, the peace, the joy, the happiness, and everything that we need. Help us to always to recognize it, to accept it, to embrace it. It leads us to life far what we could hope or imagine. We look to you first, nothing else for protection and for comfort. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and reminding us of your truth. Help us to keep our eyes on you, especially in times like this. May we remember that you can always use things for us for the good, for your glory. Give us a heart and that trusts and take away the desires to lean to our own understanding. Lord God, you said if we ask, it shall be given. If we seek, we shall find and the knock and the door shall be opened. Thank you for your protection, your provision, and your presence. We want to live in the shadows of your wing. When life is hard, we don't know what to do. Help us to remember that you are with us and that we are never alone. Lord, thank you for being a God. Thank you for being our God. Like I always said, the Lord is my shepherd, and that's all I want. You are our life, O oh Lord God. Continue to live in us. And we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let everybody say amen. Back to you, PJ. Back to amen. you, my brother. Amen. Thank yes. you, man of God. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, Minister Tony got excited. I was going to close up the message, but he said, you done, PJ. I gave my testimony, and we're going to pray. And so we give God thanks and praise uh, for that. Thank you, Minister Tony, uh, for, for the powerful testimony, of course, and the powerful prayer. And, and for each and every one of you, please know God's heart is he wants relationship with you. And the way that we build our relationship, the way that our relationship with him grows stronger is through, listen, through our time that we spend with him, just talking to him as his children. I mean, getting to that place that you're absolutely comfortable knowing that God is not going to beat you up, right? He, he's not going to bad talk you. You know, he's not going to talk down to you. He's not going to talk ill to you. That, that's the enemy. Okay, that's the enemy. But God is going to welcome you with open arms. And he says, come just as you are. Now, if you're a mess, guess what? He won't leave you there. God loves us enough to, to take us, right, remold, refashion, right, uh, and allow us to be what he had in mind before the worlds were framed. And so that is our heart. That is our prayer uh, for you today is to always pray, always put God first. You don't have to, you know, and I don't want to confuse anybody. You know, if you're at work or you're, you know, you're in a shopping center, you know, you're, you're in your car, you, you don't have to pull over, you know, and hide in the trunk to pray to the Lord. You, you, don't, you don't have to go into the dressing room and, and, and pray to the Lord. <clears throat> you don't have to go into the break room or kitchen. You, you can cocoon yourself right where you are. Shut everything 
Oh, God is so awesome. You don't even have to close your eyes. It can be a connection with you and him, right? Just smiling, saying, Father, you know exactly what I'm going through right about now. You know that I want to go off and give these people a piece of my mind, but you have given me a spirit of love. Come on and a sound mind, God. Allow me to be what you want me to be right now in this situation in Jesus' name. And I promise you, when you do that, God will give you peace that passes all understanding by Christ Jesus. That's what the Word of God says. It promises that in Philippians. Come on. So, so today, as we close up this prayer, we close up our service, I want you to know that we're praying for you. We're praying for you. We're praying for you tonight. We're praying for you this evening. We're praying for you this morning. And we want you to be able to reach out to us. If you need anything at all, I don't care where you are in the world, reach, it's coming in the chat right now. Hope Chapel Pearl West. Come on, the information is there. Phone numbers, uh, emails, text, text us, whatever. You know, put it out there. And, and you don't gotta say a whole lot of stuff. If all you put in there is 911, we don't even need your name. Just nine, one. Please pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. And God knows exactly. Come on, that's what we said already. You know, some people say, no, I need to know what I'm praying for. I, I, I can't pray for you until you tell me what you're praying for because you might be praying for something that's sinful. No, tell us. Nine, one, one. And we know God is not going to give you anything sinful, but God will give you exactly what you need, man, what you need. We love you, we thank God for you, and we want you to have a wonderful day in Jesus' name. Hey, I am Pastor James Thomas Montgomery, Senior Pastor of Hope Chapel Pearl West Freedom Point. We are all about Jesus, and Jesus is all about freedom. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you, and we will see you real soon. Enjoy your day or your evening. Amen and amen.